Are you ready for a long day? Maybe the longest day of my life. So we have 226 miles, like a conservative estimate of how far we can go here. Our mission today, a Texas road trip. That's nothing new for us. We love road trips. What is new is we'll be doing 20 hours in an electric car. I chose the Chevy Bolt for this trip. It's got good range and it's on the more affordable side and GM agreed to loan me the car. Obviously, a gas-powered car would eat this trip up, but I want to know how well an electric vehicle handles the challenge. Okay, David, first decision of the day. Okay. It looks like there's one in a uh, little north of Waco. We, we could theoretically maybe get to Georgetown. I think we could probably get there, but I think don't think that's a good idea. I don't either. <laughs> Let's stop in Waco. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Does that work? <laughs> You're so good at this. <laughs> I can't see anything in there. Authorized. Ooh, I hear some sounds. As of 2019, there were almost 30,000 electric vehicles in Texas. By 2033, state officials expect 3.3 million. How will Texas meet that demand? We should have a charger up here on the right. Okay, over here. Those are closed. So we drove to our destination to charge, and we can't charge here. How's your battery like? Oh, uh, we're gonna. We got 36 miles. We have, we, we're gonna have to charge up somewhere. We're in Austin now to talk to this guy. It's Tom Smitty Smith. He's an environmentalist and the executive director of the Texas Electric Transportation Alliance. Smitty wants Texas to build a statewide network capable of charging a huge number of cars, semis, and delivery trucks. We have several thousand chargers in Texas now. We're going to have to have 20 to 30 times more than that to be able to really build a network that's seamless. Today, Tesla has a nationwide network of fast chargers that take about 25 to 30 minutes, but only Tesla owners can use them. Here's what the rest of the EV drivers are dealing with. There's only one fast charger between Austin and the Houston suburbs, and it's not working right now. The maximum power of this charger has been temporarily reduced in order to improve service and perform an update. And how far to Katy? It's 45 miles. We've got minimum 68 miles. So we can make that. I think we can. probably. I think we can make it. Smitty wants 95 charging mega centers along the interstates and highways every 50 miles. But why not wait for private companies to do all this? 28 other states have gone ahead of us in terms of policy development, and in one way or another, begun to develop the roadmap to have border-to-border -border charging stations. And if we don't act soon, we're gonna be left behind economically. Right now, electric cars make up about 3% of the market. The question is, are the rest of us really ready for this? This is Eddie Alterman. He is the former longtime editor-in-chief of Car and Driver magazine. I'm telling him that I'm finding the Bolt has great acceleration. But what does Eddie think about it? Not sexy enough. You know, people want the car to say something about themselves, and they want to look cool. What is cool to Eddie and lots of consumers is a coming wave next year of electric SUVs and trucks, like the electric Ford F-150, an electric Hummer, new companies like Rivian, and the Tesla Cybertruck. I think the EV truck is kind of the best of both worlds, because it says, you know, like, I'm rugged, and I do things for myself, and I'm not a, you know, knuckle-scraping troglodyte, you know, that, I, <laughs> that I'm actually part of this new future wave of, of uh, what's to come. Once you start pulling a trailer or putting bricks in the payload, um, what happens to the battery? Is it really up to the job that a working person would need it for? You know, we see EPA numbers for these vehicles um, that are really, really high. But when you're driving it in the real world, um, that number shrinks down quite a bit. Does it indicate like where? Oh, right there. Yeah. Can't quite reach? No. Uh, it's declined my credit card three times. Let's go on an electric car trip, he said. It'll be fun, he said. I'm about to cry. 
Lots of people who buy electric cars believe they're making a difference when it comes to climate change. But are they? Let's talk about that with Dr. Ramanan Krishnamurti. He drives a Tesla himself. I can go from zero to 60 in three seconds. And he's the chief energy officer for the University of Houston. For starters, he says manufacturing an electric car can have a very large carbon footprint. The part of making the electric vehicle, the motor, the battery, that is a highly energy intensive process. And today, much of that in energy comes from fossil energy. Take a new electric Nissan LEAF versus an average new conventional car. Carbon Brief, a group that analyzes emissions data, looked at research from Europe, and it found on day one, the electric car actually has higher greenhouse gas emissions because it takes more energy to make one. But because it doesn't burn gasoline, the electric car over time has much lower emissions. But how much lower? depends on where the electricity comes from. When you're driving an electric vehicle, aren't you burning coal in many instances? When I uh, charge up my car, like you're doing right now, much of that electricity is coming from either coal or natural gas. In Texas, 17% of our electricity comes from coal, 41% from natural gas, but 23% of our electricity comes from wind, and that's far more than any other state. And that's the electricity mix that charges an electric vehicle. At the same time, improving battery technology means new electric cars are going farther and farther on a charge. Effectively, over a period of time, I can have impact on, on climate change, or at least slow down the pace of climate change globally. Can't make it back to Dallas without one more charge. 30 miles, we have 30 miles to go. So electric cars are great in the city, but trying to keep a car charged for 20 hours was not one of my brightest ideas. Still, we did learn that Texas has a long way to go towards reliable charging. There's exciting things happening with new technology and vehicles. And when it comes to climate change, EVs can be a major player in cutting greenhouse gas emissions. This was great. Let's never do it again. <laughs> if you've got something you want verified, send me an email.